84. Male gymnasts to Los Angeles, where they'll go head to head with a quality American contingent. The Soviets will be led by the reigning world all around champion, Yuri Korolev, and the brilliant young star, 16 year old Dmitry Belozerchev. They'll be facing the likes of UCLA's Peter Bidmar, the 1982 U.S. champion, and the up and coming Mitch Gaylord. The U.S. Soviet dual meet today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Arena. That will be the venue for boxing. And right next door is the Los Angeles Coliseum. The opening ceremony will be held there, along with the track and field events. On the west side of town, on the campus of UCLA, is Pauley Pavilion. And that will be the site for men's and women's gymnastics. And in the Playa del Rey section near the Los Angeles airport is Loyola Marymount University. And the weightlifting competition will be held in that building, the Albert Gersten Pavilion. Today, competition of a different sort will be held at the Gersten Pavilion. As you look inside, the United States getting set to face the Soviet Union in men's competition in gymnastics. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Al Michaels reporting from Los Angeles. And any time you have the United States taking on the Soviet Union in anything, there's a great deal of excitement and anticipation, and particularly so today, because the Olympics are just over a year away. They'll take place in this very city. And thus, today, we'll get a pretty good idea as to the relative strengths and weaknesses of the men's teams for both the United States and the Soviet Union. If you go back a year, the two teams had a dual meet in Gainesville, Florida. The U.S. team won, but don't be deceived by that victory. The Soviets did not send their best people. Today, a far different story. And for more on that, our expert commentator on men's gymnastics, Kurt Thomas, there's little doubt that from Moscow, they have sent the aces this time. They really have. They feel they're a very strong team. They don't want a repeat of last year. They want to win, and they want their, a positive road towards 1984. They've sent Alexander Dityatin. He's been plagued with injuries, but he's the Olympic champion. He carries a name into this event. They sent world champion Yuri Korolev, very strong performer. Gets better every competition. But they also have a young, strong up-and-comer, Belozachev. They're hoping for a lot from him, and I think you'll see it. We also have a great team on the floor. Peter Vidmar, ranked number one in our country right now. He's a little sick this morning, but he's feeling very well right now. We have Mitch Gaylord, ranked number two. Both of them turning on very much this year. So it should prove to be a good competition. We'll have the floor exercise first. Each team is represented by six men. They'll compete in six different events. The five highest scores count toward the overall team title. The gymnast with the highest point total at the end will be the all-around champion. Now the first competitor we'll take a look at is Mitch Gaylord of the United States from UCLA. He had a good meet against the Soviet Union last year in Gainesville, Florida. In fact, he was the all-around champion. And uh, recently, in the American Cup in New York this spring, he finished second in the all-around to Peter Vidmar. And now that American Cup really getting excited. Here's a new routine. Pike full in back out. Very nicely done. Beefed up his difficulty a little bit here on floor exercise. Second pass. I don't flip flop. Pike one and three. Toe touch one and a quarter. Beautiful. Now those are the kind of skills that get the crowd going. Influences the judges and gets you a score. They're not deaf. You're right. We've seen it happen. It doesn't matter where the event takes place. If the crowd starts to acknowledge the uh, performer's routine, it does have an effect on the judges. So far, Mitch is off to a very good start. It's his third tumbling run. It's round off Arabian dive. Head spring to a straddle. Another very spectacular but simple skill. trouble there on his scale one tenth of a point now his dismount tuck double back somersault gotta nail it very nice routine for Mitch Gaylord Mitch Gaylord of the United States at the age of uh, 22 rounding into shape for the Olympics and turning in a good routine in the floor exercise Here's a slow motion look at Mitch's second tumbling run. Now here's where he really upgraded his difficulty and added some originality. He used a round off back handspring, piked one and three quarter somersault. But right here is the originality. Jumps up, toe touch, front one and a quarter. That's what the judges are looking for. And the judges mull it over. The gymnast score is determined by five judges, two Americans, two Soviets, and a neutral superior judge from Canada. The high and low scores are eliminated. The remaining scores are averaged to determine the individual score for that event. And in this particular case, Mitch Gaylord 
winds up with a good mark, a 9.80 to get underway for Mitch in the floor exercise. Back in a moment. You must be joking! That ball was in! No, Mr. McEnroe. You're Peter Bidmar getting set for his floor exercise routine. Little doubt right now in the minds of most who follow this sport that you're looking at the best male gymnast in the U.S. at the moment. Kurt Thomas spoke with him earlier. Peter, it's been said that you do not have the raw talent. You have the drive, the motivation to be the best. What do you think? Well, I think uh, to a degree what I lack most maybe is raw talent, and I hopefully I'll be able to make up for that with my drive. I've really been taught well by coach Sakamoto particularly to really push myself and I've learned really to push myself from within I think that's been my my greatest asset to the sport and while sometimes I may have problems technically with tricks by just working them over and over and over I'm able to overcome them so that's I think the thing that's really stood out to my success and it'd be it'd be nice if I could really try to be able to get tricks now a little easier without so much of the, of the, the painstaking work then maybe that'll come in the future. Peter Bidmar mentioning Makoto Sakamoto, uh, who works at UCLA. Peter is a student there, a senior, and here he goes now on the floor X. And Peter mounts with a full in back out, double back with a full twist, no introduction so far. Second tumbling run, to round off backhand spring, double back. He also upgraded his difficulty, two double backs there. Peter's a very stylish performer on the floor exercise, and he gets a lot of that from Makoto. Japanese coach. Japanese have typically been very stylish on the floor exercise. He looks at ease out there, and that's the objective on the, in this sport. Now here's this press to a handstand. Very critical part of his routine. You must hold the handstand for two full seconds. Once your legs are together. The gymnast has 50 to 70 seconds in which to perform his routine. At the 50 second point, the judge will ring a bell, and then that gymnast knows that he has 20 seconds in which to finish. Peter's going to finish with a pike double back, again upgrading the difficulty from a tuck to a pike. Very nice routine for Peter. Peter Bidmar, 21 years old, 5 feet 5, 130 pounds. He took it easy today. Uh, Bidmar, either with a touch of the flu or perhaps some lingering food poisoning wasn't feeling quite up to par but he does get off to a good start with this routine here's a slow motion look at his pike double back dismount now peter recently upgraded this from a tuck double back to a pike double back which adds a risk element and also upgrades the difficulty and that's what the judges want And the score coming up for peter vidmar a good one 9.80 matching the mark given Mitch gaylord Let's have a look now at Dmitry Bilozerchev. He is just 16 years old. It seems every year there's a new Soviet gymnast, a hot young gymnast, and this is this year's model. Well, I traveled with him a year ago, and he was very small, and he's put on a lot of strength lately, and boy, they're really hoping for a lot from him. It's round off that can spring, one and a half twist step out, round off Arabian dive roll. Very clean so far. I'll pick up into circles. Watch this. He'll go right through the handstand and a flare. Very nice move. There's a press to a handstand. Mm. Little different. Haven't seen that in a while. The third tumbling pass. Full twisting dive roll. Now he'll set up for his dismount in the corner. Scale. Be very careful at this point of your routine. Now for his dismount. Randolph, backhand spring, tuck double back. Little hop on the landing, but that should score very well. Well, we'd heard a lot about him prior to his arrival. They're trying to give him some international experience prior to the Olympics. Dmitry Bilozerchev of the Soviet Union, good floor exercise routine. Here's a slow motion look at his flare on the floor. Now this not only takes flexibility, but also tremendous upper body strength to push right here up through the handstand position. Now as he gets through his straight arm press to a handstand, another strength skill, pressing up to the handstand with a wide arm position and holding it for two seconds. 
Now the score for Dmitry Vilozerchev, a 9.80. Good routine for him. Yuri Korolev of the Soviet Union. Boy, they are so deep in terms of talent. Here's a fellow that uh, won the World All-Around Championship in 1981. He also won this event, and there's a double layout somersault. Two somersaults in a straight body position. It's hard enough doing it in a tuck. He straightens his body out. Second tumbling one, watch this. Handspring double front. Beautiful. A lot of difficulty in all of his routines. That's why he's world champion. He's pressed to a handstand. Very clean. Handspring. Lay out front somersault to another handspring. Nice smooth transition there. Now he'll work a flare on the floor and also take it right up through the handstand position. Beautiful. Now, you never know what he's going to do for his last tumbling run. But he normally does a full in back out. Round off, back handspring, full in back out. Little hop on the landing. Great routine considering the difficulty. Yuri Karlev has already made quite a mark on the international scene. The all-around champion won that title at uh, Moscow in 1981. Finished third in the all-around at the World Cup in 82. Here's another look at his mount. He does a double layout somersault. Now, this particular skill was originated by a Soviet gymnast, Nikolai Andrianov. Got to take it nice and high, get your hips moving around very fast, and he does it very well. Korolev, 20 years old. He's from Vladimir, a town about 100 miles east of Moscow, and his score coming up is a good one, 9.85. In fact, that's the best mark given thus far for the floor exercise. We'll be back with more of the U.S.-Soviet dual men's gymnastics meet right after. have been completed here at the U.S.-Soviet dual gymnastics meet and as far as the team competition is concerned the Soviets lead the Americans by 0.95. As far as the individual competition is concerned for the all-around title it's Korolev on top and then Belozerchev and Vidmar are tied for second just five one hundredths of a point behind the leader. Now, Mitch Gaylord ready to mount the rings. His third event, he scored 9-8 on the floor X and 9-7-5 in his pommel horse routine. Al, this has always been a good event for Mitch, but he's really upgraded his difficulty again in this event. There's a kip to a plange on the rings. Must hold all your hold parts for two seconds. Picked up a little bit of swing there, but that's not going to hurt him. Another originality part. This one came through to an immediate cross. Now, you can see there, they got the crowd going. To prepare for his dismount now. Straight arm, press to a handstand. Here's where he changed his routine a little bit. There's an inlocate back up to rise to a handstand. Dislocates through to a triple back somersault. One, two, three. Perfect landing for Mitch. And listen to the response from the crowd. It, there didn't appear to be any visible deductions in that one. You're perfect. He had a little bit of swing, but no real problem. So Mitch Gaylord being congratulated by his mates. Another look here. Here's that dismount. He dislocates through the handstand and pulls up nice and high for a triple back somersault. Does not move on the landing. Brings his legs together for a solid stick. And Gaylord anxiously awaiting his score. And there it is. It's a 9.90. Mitch Gaylord with a near-perfect routine on the ring. And that really got him started up here. Now... We will take a look at Yuri Korolev of the Soviet Union. After two rotations, Korolev leading with a total of 19.70. Now, you'll see a pretty similar routine to Mitch's. They dismount with the same skill, the triple back somersault. But he has a little bit more strength in his routine. First move pulls to an inverted hang. Now, he'll do also, he'll do a kip, but right into a cross. And pulls out of the cross, added strength. Now here's his press to a handstand, which is the same as Mitch's. Straight arm, straight body. Lowers to an inverted cross, another strength move. Now he'll start his swing. And he did pick up a little swing. Now that technically is the deduction every time he swings of one-tenth. Killed the swing a little bit right there with an inlocate back up rise to a handstand. Here's his dismount. Dislocates through a handstand. Pulls around a triple back somersault. Ooh, kicked out a little bit too early. That's going to cost him. It may cost him 
his lead as far as the all-around is concerned. Gaylord turning in a super performance, a 9.90. Korolev with a problem at the end. Well, now you'll see where he kicked out in the slow motion. Dislocates through the handstand, pulls around one. Now you'll see two. Now it opens up a little early, gets a little far forward, putting your hands down. Technically, another three-tenths of a point deduction. So we'll see what the judges uh, rule here as Korolev awaits his score, and it comes up a 9.70. And that would move Gaylord, who was tied for fifth after two rotations, in front of Korolev. As you look now at the other Soviet gymnast, Dmitry Bilozerchev, who was just five one hundreds back of Korolev after two events. Now, one of the requirements on this event, you have to swing to a handstand. You also have to press to a handstand. 16 years old, watch the amount of strength in this young man's upper body. There's a kip to an L. Now he does a straight arm, straight body press to a handstand. None of the other gymnasts use that. There's a first strength move. Inverted cross. And now down to a planche. Another strength move. In order to perform a strength move like that, it takes hours in the gym working on positions, working on developing that strength. Now there's an in-locate. Back up rise to a handstand, keeping the rings very still. Now his dismount is a double layout somersault. Dislocate through, double layout, and he stuck the landing. Very nice routine for Dimitri. Bielozerchev off to a great start in this dual meet. And the crowd responding to a young man who is, as we said before, getting in some international experience prior to the Olympic Games. Here's another look at some of the strength. There's an in-locate right from the bottom to a kip L. Now watch the strength in his upper body. Presses straight arms, straight body, keeping the rings very still. Now dropping down to an inverted cross. You're only required to do one strength move. He does three. That routine was right up there with Gaylord's, and the score is exactly the same, a 9.90. Earlier, Peter Vidmar came up with a 9.75 on the rings, and thus at the conclusion of this event in the team competition, the Soviet Union leads the United States by 1.05 points. And in the all-around competition, Bielor Zerchev is now leading. Gaylord has moved into second, and Korolev has dropped into a third-place tie along with Vidmar. As this dual meet continues now at the Gersten Pavilion on the campus of Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, it's been a good performance by the United States men's team with five of the six events completed and just one to go, the high bar. The Soviet Union leads by just one point. And as far as the all-around competition is concerned, a great battle. Korolev is leading, but by just five one-hundredths of a point, four-way tie for second place, and Vidmar and Gaylord right in the thick of things. Here's another man who's tied for second, Vladimir Artemov of the Soviet Union mounting the high bar. Now all of the gymnasts in this competition have full difficulty routines, so it's really going to go down to this last event. There's a one-armed giant over the top. One of the requirements is a release move, a two-handed release. Here comes his two-handed release, a flat reverse X. Oh, big major deduction there, five-tenths of a point. Now the gymnast has 30 seconds to remount the bar. Remounts and kips up, finishes routine. Another requirement coming up is inverted giants. He rolls the inverts, takes it up over the top, back to the bar skill. There's a stalder. All he has left is his dismount. This is going to be a critical routine for them. Triple back somersault. Ooh, that's going to that's going to cost them. Well, we know at best he can only score a 9.50 on. As far as the all-around title is concerned, you can just about write him off. Another look at the miss here. Now, what happened was he opened his body a little too late. That carried him over the bar too far, and he was unable to re-grasp. Artemov uh, cannot be anticipating the posting of his score with any great relish. And uh, the score for him is just a 9.35. That will have to count in the Soviet overall team score because Alexander Dityatin, the former World and Olympic champion, has scratched from this event. He's been suffering from a knee injury incurred earlier this week, and thus our team's score will have to count toward the uh, Soviet team total. Now for the United States, here is Mitch Gaylord, who's having a great meet. This is Mitch's best event. He's scored a 10 on this event before. 
There's a stoop into inverted giants. Now here comes his release move. It's a flyaway half from a one-armed giant. Very nicely done. A little bit of straddle at the end, but no real deduction. Stalder. Here went over the top. Now preparing for his dismount, which is his triple back somersault. One, two, three. Oh, lack of concentration there. He easily handles that move. Very tough break for Gaylord. Had a good routine going. He was tied for second coming into this, the final event of the competition. Another look here. Now, when I talk about concentration, you have to feel your feet hitting the ground, and then you have to stand up. I think Mitch just lost his concentration there on that last somersault. So the door had been opened wide for the Americans, but uh, Gaylord's unable to come on through as he has his problem at the end of the routine, and consequently his score is just a 9.40. Now next up for the Soviet Union is Yuri Korolev, who is the all-around leader coming into this event. Korolev uh, normally very, very good on the high bar. Mounts with a stem, immediate pirouette, one arm giant there. Here comes his release move. It's a reverse heck. He catches it nicely and pulls a giant out of it. Line change, fulfilling a requirement here with inverted giants up over the top. Hop out. Here's a front catch, another release move, adding some more difficulty. Now you're required to do one release move, but not two. And his dismount, a full twisting layout double somersault. Very nice routine. And with the pressure on in both an individual and team sense, Korolev responds like the world champion he is with a very good routine on the high bar. He awaits his score, which should be a good one. And for Korolev, it is a 9.85 that comes up. Still to come on the high bar, we'll be taking a look at both Belazirchev and Vidmar. Belazirchev tied for second after five events in the all-around competition is ready to mount the high bar. Final exercise for him at the age of 16, turning in a most impressive performance here in Los Angeles. And now I think the high bar is his best event. He swings technically correct, watch his body positions. Now his first move would be a one-arm giant in a reverse grip, pirouette over the top to another one-arm giant. Now here comes two release moves, reverse heck, immediate flyaway half regrass. No apparent deduction so far. There's a kip reach under. Oh no, full turn over the bar to Eagle Grip Giants. It's a hot pirouette. Now all he's left is his dismount, which is a half in, half out. Double back with a full twist and sticks the landing. Beautifully executed routine. Little doubt you just watched the rising young star on the international scene, Dmitry Bilozerchev of the Soviet Union. He's betting for the all around title here. Good routine. Well, here's a slow motion look at those two release moves. Now watch, this is what separates him from the rest. Look at his form. Beautiful form, takes everything up nice and high. And he's very aggressive on this event. Now he needs a 9.90 to tie Yuri Korolev. He just may have gotten it too. The judges mulling it over and the score coming up just short, 9.85. But that score is still good enough to clinch the team competition for the Soviet Union. So Korolev is still in the lead. The Soviets have clinched the team competition. And now here is Peter Vidmar. If he can score a 9.90 here, he would tie Korolev for the all-around title. Well, he's capable of that. He can score a 9.9. There's a backup rise. Three hip immediate cow hop. Stalder. Now here's his two release moves. Does a hecht over the bar. Immediate flyaway half. Little form break there. But that's only about a tenth of a deduction. Dislocate out to inverted giants. Another front flip catch. He's cooking. Kip, pirouette over the top. And now all he has left is his dismount. There's a stalder. Does a double layout somersault. He must stick it. One, two. Nails the landing, Peter Midmar. What a way to end this beat. The United States will lose to the Soviet Union, but they will come very close in the team competition, and Bidmar may very well have earned himself at least a share of the all-around title. We'll find out. That was a near-perfect routine. He needs a 9.90 to tie Korolev. Here's another look at his dismount. It's a double layout somersault. He takes it up nice and high, but you can tell the concentration's in his face. 
He wants to land it. He knows he needs a stick. And he stands up for a perfect landing. And the score is 9.90 for Peter Vedmar. And a great accomplishment for this 21-year-old senior at UCLA to tie the reigning world champion. The U.S. team loses by just nine-tenths of a point in the dual meet competition. Korolev and Vidmar tie for first in the all-around with Bielizirchev third, Scott Johnson of the U.S. fifth, Mitch Gaylord seventh. Well, despite losing the dual meet, Kurt, I think most people leave here uh, rather optimistic about the U.S. chances of the Olympics next year because the Americans overall turned in a very strong performance. Realistically, though, and you're the expert, let me ask you to assess it to tell me how our chances look to you in the Olympics next year. Well, this was a tremendous boost. To come so close to the national Soviet team, the best team in the world, there's got to be a tremendous boost for our team. And it's up for grabs. I think we can do really well in the Olympics. And Peter Vidmar, again, turning on, I think he has a solid chance of winning an all-around medal. Well, we'll find out. But for right now, that's the story from Los Angeles, the U.S.-Russia dual meet. Al Michaels for Kurt Thomas saying so long.